Right then, so I'm doing a few videos at the moment which are a bit different to normal. Um, most of the videos, pretty much all the videos we do, are basically for stock cars to come in and it's basically just a facility for people to look at the videos to make sure that the car drives as it should or if there's any issues they get to know about them. Um, but what it doesn't leave me a lot of time within those videos to do is to really talk about the cars um, because obviously we buy and sell cars but we also like cars and we particularly like Hondas and we particularly like Lexus it's just what we've done it's what I've liked personally for many years um, so whilst we're entering the second lockdown I've obviously got a bit more time on my hands and it's allowed me a, a bit of a self-indulgence to do a few videos they are purely for a bit of fun they're not for I'm not here to infl be inflammatory or um, provocative um, but to give what I think is a genuine feedback on some of the cars we sell um, and this one's a really good I've been looking I've been really looking forward to doing this video and there's a reason for it um, we've sold Hondas for over 20 years um, but this is the first of the new generation Civics we've had um, so it's a really good time to do the video to get into rather than become accustomed to it get used to it um, it's how someone who would first drive the car would feel when getting into the car and that's kind of how I, I wanted to do the video so realistically obviously I'm in the car I'm not going to do a kind of a walk around of the vehicle in that sense I'm not going to go over the top because uh, beauty's in the eye of the beholder uh, exterior wise personally wasn't really sold on it um, but I'm not that sold on most Hondas when they first come out it takes a little while for me to warm to them and appreciate certain things about them and that tends to be the case with this car um, they like most Hondas look far far better in the flesh and up close than they do in photographs they generally don't photograph well and half my job is photographing Hondas and it's quite a frustrating thing to have to do trying to find a good angle good sunlight that kind of thing um, they're not photogenic in that sense but that doesn't mean they're not good looking cars this looks really nice in the flesh it really really does the front end's really smart it's quite aggressive looking as well um, but as I said I'll leave that to you know your discretion but what I'm going to concentrate really on is getting inside the car and driving the car so the first thing you notice when you get in the car is sitting in it you do sit in them now you don't sit kind of up on them so you are sitting much lower to the ground or well, that's what it feels like you're sitting down in the in the dash of the car and actually it takes a little my mind at least it takes a little while to get used to because I have been so used to sort of that, that driving position you, you tend to get with the Civics and obviously with the CRV has been more upright um, but it obviously has its advantages headrooms really good in the car um, you feel much more in the vehicle and you know, daft as it sounds obviously you do but you really do the driving position is, is fantastic it's you know you are straight ahead um, pedal steering wheel I know, you know most aren't offset like they used to be years ago but you still get the odd one that can feel a bit odd but it just feels very natural driving position the seats are brilliant um, you know the old seats weren't bad and the old Civics are very comfortable but these they've obviously gone to town on they they are extraordinarily good lots of support lots of range up and down you can't fail to get a, a good driving position set up in the car um, my first look at the dashboard and this is where you can get a slight optical illusion with this dashboard when you look from the side where you're looking with a camera now and I tend to look at the photographs it almost looks a bit disjointed like this bit here isn't joined to this bit here it, and it looks like there it doesn't quite go together it does when you're sat behind the steering wheel it's really bizarre because then you've got the other trim here which matches that one there um, so it can look slightly awkward from certain angles but from this angle it, it's really really good um, Clearly, I mean, this particular example is actually quite a high mileage car for the age of the vehicle. It's done 55,000 miles. First things first, as with pretty much all Hondas, it's a brilliantly put together car. Um, there are no squeaks, no rattles at all from the car. And that's a 
potato mine in terms of how motoring mag magazines and some reviewers do the same old thing and it really is frustrating but they sort of tap the hard plastics which it has got you know here and here but they're textured the same as the softer squidgier stuff it's got some fake stitching there which is pretty naff but actually breaks up the plastic so you can see why they've done it it gives it substance it gives it kind of a soft look um, but it is a very smart modern and all importantly non-intimidating dashboard you can get in the car and pretty much straight away drive the car without any issues at all it's, it's not a complicated car to drive um, the sat nav system um, has actually been used it's very similar to what they used on the last civics and on the crvs of certain vintages so i'm quite used to it and i find it quite easy to use it isn't as good as some um from what i understand but you know for those that haven't used others it's actually really rather good what i do like about it and again some sat navs and some of these tablet screens means you've got to go into the screen and wait for the um, climate control go to that kind of stuff with this one you've got a shortcut button a little climate button there very quickly into your air conditioning system works really really nicely i think it's a really nice touch you've got separate controls there for the heaters as well um, they've got three stage heated seats now which as opposed to the two seats uh, two settings on the last one down here no gear lever because this is a diesel auto a very rare beast indeed um, and it's the ex so it's a very high spec one um, so you don't get buttons for the uh, sorry levers for the gear lever anymore um, it is the one part I don't like I'm gonna be honest with you and it's not a case of familiarity it's a case that Honda with the CRV which uses the same sort of engine gearbox combination or bits like high horsepower um, uses a little toggle gear lever it's really nice to hold and it's so intuitive you get in the car you don't have to look you flick the thing forward and back it feels nice the drive buttons feels nice the reverse ones just feels a little bit hard-edged um, and i've been stupidly critical and it is something that's dead easy to use so if you're not used the other one you probably think that's absolutely fine but because they had the option to do the other one i'm surprised they didn't that's the only thing i would say coming in front dashboard layout is quite modern um simple easy to read however again my second gripe if you are only had only driven other cars, Golfs, Focuses, Astras, whatever, you'd love this. It looks fantastic. However, if you've gone from a ninth generation or eighth generation Civic, which had the two tier design of the dashboard with the speedo separated and upper high, you probably won't like this as much. And I don't because you've got the speedo in there in the middle of the rev counter. But underneath that, you've got trip information, you've got other information going on. So to get your speed, yeah, it's there and it's clear, but it's not as clear as it was when it was separate. And I think Honda gone backwards on that personally. Uh, as I said, if you'd never had the others, you wouldn't even, it wouldn't enter your mind. Uh, the steering wheel and the controls on the steering wheel, the steering wheel, first of all, feels brilliant. Perfect diameter, perfect grips. Um, it just, it, it just feels really nice. You've then got obviously a whole host of controls as is the modern way on the steering wheel um, they've changed certain things like the volume controls not just where my thumb is here you've got to go slightly into the steering wheel which again i don't think is as nice um, what is nice is the fact that you've got this auto cruise control on these models now uh, which is really good if i'm being hypercritical i mean they've got these little ridges so you know the extremes of the button which is fine but they are a little bit sort of sharp feeling um, and I they used to have the raised ones before but slightly sort of rounded um, and I think that's actually was nicer personally but overall it's a modern interior it's done typically as you'd expect Honda to do in terms of the build of it is brilliant the visibility you get superb out of the car um, it's a car you can feel comfortable in and you can just get on with your driving but you're pampered uh, but you know it's going to all work, you know it's going to keep working, and that's the one thing I would say. So coming on to the drive of the car, so this is a big, big departure from the last couple of generations Civic, because they've gone back to fully independent suspension, gone as the rear torsion beam on the back. Um, that makes for a more adaptable suspension setup, they can do different things with it. Um, notably, they can improve the ride quality, but also it 
does have the drawback, of course, it means you lose what they used to offer in the past, which was the magic seats in the back of the, where the seats flipped up. So that's the downside. I'm happy to live with that because this suspension now and this road is horrible. And this is why I'm going down it. The old Civic that Mark 8 would be jiggling about quite a lot and banging into some bumps. The next generation, which they did a lot of work on it, it was brilliant, but it couldn't hide the fact that, you know, both rear wheels were kind of working together at the same time, the torsion being to some degree. Um, and so it was a little bit more jiggly, um, but they did a, say a really good job. But this is absolutely fantastic. And I've been trying to think kind of how it makes me feel. Um, it just feels, the, the car rides really nicely. It's very, it just feels very sophisticated. I have to say it feels really, really, um, the damping's just the right side of firm. So it's, it's comfortable, but it gives you brilliant body control. Um, so you can put it through corners and it, it responds really, really nicely. Um, but at all times, it remains completely composed. It's a huge, huge leap forward uh, from the last one, again, in, in my opinion. Uh, you do have the option down here, a little button here you can press to go into dynamic mode on the suspension. I find it too hard, I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm sure some people will like it. It's quite sporty in the way it does it. Um, but to me, it's just a little bit too firm. And you know what you gain in body control, you lose too much in terms of ride quality. Um, but Hondas have always given you what I've, or again, I've always liked about them, that they have a sporting edge to them. So if they go too soft in the suspension, you lose kind of a little bit of the DNA of what the Civics have always been about. Um, and this car, still has it which is a relief because they could have gone too far the other way they could have sanitized it made it too sensible but with this and the front end in particular the steering is beautifully weighted the turn in is absolutely fantastic the body stays really really flat um, it simply flows through corners the back end of the car front end of the car are working completely in harmony so the body motions are all together you, on the old car you occasionally would get a slight feeling that the front and rear weren't kind of working as one but this is absolutely superb you can see why the latest generation type r's are so good because what a platform to work off um, it just corners so flat the steering inputs are minimal and the front end bites and flows absolutely perfectly i can't think how they could possibly improve on a chassis like this it is one really beautifully done um you know, it, you know they've got they've got some very very clever engineers at honda doing these kind of things um and they've just hit the sweet spot with the chassis it's a car that you can switch in and out of modes yourself you can be enthusiastic one second and back off and just want to relax because this section of the road is particularly horrible um, and this rides it so so comfortably um, I, yeah I'm amazed actually I'm amazed what they've done I, I was uh, hoping it'd be good but sometimes you're left a little bit flat you think, well yeah it's okay um, but this is for Honda at least a bit of a game changer This particular car, I mean, obviously they do the uh, one litre petrol, they do the 1.5 petrol, neither of which I've driven yet, and I'm hoping to get a 1.5 turbo soon. I'm not that interested in the one litres. Um, the 1.6 diesel I'm driving now, and this is mated to the nine speed auto gearbox, is a amazing combination. It really is. The, the diesel engine's always been good on the Civics. It's a, it's a great engine, very fuel efficient um, on the whole, very refined notwithstanding the fact that they'll always know it's a diesel of course um, but they suppress it you know quite well um, but the diesel the the gearbox to go with it because it, it is nice having automatics i have to say and you know, i've all mine have obviously been manual because that, that's all they've offered um, but if i was to buy one of these now i would almost certainly buy the automatic um, it's so slick shifting the gear changes are lightning quick you hardly feel them. It 
rarely if ever gets caught out being indecisive it can of course you know like all, all gearboxes but it is very rare it's, it's a it's a very 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 good combination um, in terms of criticisms of the powertrain very few it's got all the power you need it's, it's got all the economy you need um, it's generally very quiet as well um, certainly cruising speed they could probably do with giving it a just the tiniest bit more sound insulation. Um, it's at speeds like these lower speeds when you pull away at low revs. So, sort of one and a half to two and a half. You know it's there. It's got a sort of that diesely noise. I said it is quiet, but if they could just soften that just slightly, perfection. Um, but as it stands, I have to say, you know, so there's only a bit of fun doing the videos. I've been bowled over by the car kind of expecting to be in some ways um, but I'm surprised how good the thing is it really is a, a, it's a it feels like from a class above that's the one thing I would say it's, it's got that whole feel about the the, 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 right, the driver and dynamics of the car um, but that's it it's say just a bit of fun um, hope you enjoyed it and uh, on to do another one